roll out the red carpet and get out your acceptance speech because we have your backstage pass to Hollywood. Backstage pass starts now. In five, four, three, two. Are, are you, you ready? we give you the scoop on all things entertainment, I'm Hannah Balkowski. And I'm Eric Valenti. We are back from winter break and we're discussing all the drama and new releases we got. New shows, new movies, new year, new me. Hannah, do you have any New Year's resolutions? You know, I think for me this year, I want to start going to bed earlier oh. so I can have eight hours of sleep. Hannah, okay, <laughs> behind the scenes here, Hannah does not get any sleep. And mine is probably to just, like, have a more positive mindset with things. I'm usually a little bit more like, pessimistic about things. Yeah, but you can be... You can I have my moments. I have my moments. Sometimes he's the positive <laughs> one. <laughs> well, a couple of weeks ago, Hollywood's best films and shows were recognized at the 2023 Golden Globes. Sadly, Eric and I were not invited, but we have our top moments from the award show. My favorite part of the night was everyone's obsession with Brad Pitt. He was mentioned in several acceptance speeches, including Austin Butler's, where he said, quote, Brad, I love you, and Quinta Brunson, who stopped midway in her speech to say, hey, Brad Pitt. Regina Hall even started her speech by saying, I think they got my name wrong. It's Mrs. Pitt. Brad did get a new haircut, so everyone was fangirling over it, and come on, it's Brad Pitt. Another fave moment of mine was Eddie Murphy's speech after he won the Cecil B. DeVille Award, where he, was quoted, where he quoted the iconic interaction between Will Smith and Chris Rock at last year's Oscars. Murphy was listing his blueprint that he followed for his career. He said, quote, just do these three things, pay your taxes, mind your business, and keep Will Smith's wife's name out your bleeping mouth. <laughs> One of my favorite moments from the Golden Globes was when Jennifer Coolidge well, just her as a whole. Her acceptance speech was hilarious, cracking jokes left and right. After she won, she said her glo Golden Globe was too heavy and she had to put it down. Hilarious. And when she was announcing one of the winners for a Golden Globe, she said the Oscars instead of the Golden Globes. That was the icing on the cake. My second favorite moment was when Michelle Yeoh won Best Actress. But it was her speech and telling the people playing the music to shut up so she could finish what she was saying was epic. Let her speak, she's earned this. Okay, I'm also gonna mention the Austin Butler Elvis voice situation. When he was giving his speech and still had the voice he did for Elvis, it was definitely weird. He's acknowledged it and stated that he didn't notice it, but I just think he doesn't wanna drop the voice because Elvis has become his entire personality. Speaking of Elvis Presley, his daughter Lisa Marie Presley passed away just days after the Golden Globes. Sources say she suffered a cardiac arrest and that there were signs of medical issues at her last interview during the Golden Globes. Lisa Marie's memorial took, a f took place a few days ago in Graceland and was attended by many, including Austin Butler, the actor who portrayed her father Elvis Presley in last year's movie Elvis. Our hearts go out to the Presley family. I shed some tears rewatching Lisa Marie's interview with Austin Butler before the Elvis premiere, but enough tears, or maybe not. Eric, what is this new video game you keep talking about, and why is it called Tears of the Kingdom? I have a feeling it's because the sequel is going to have Zelda fans bawling their eyes out. Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is scheduled for release May 12, 2023. This is the sequel to Breath of the Wild, and it's also believed to be the last major title for the Nintendo Switch. Fans are hyped for this game and are excited to see the beautiful graphics, but the hype also comes from Nintendo having to increase Switch production in anticipation for this game. I'm not sure if I've heard of anything like this happening for a Nintendo game. 
Was anyone else obsessed with the game Nintendogs when they were younger? I loved that game. Rumor has it that there might be a mobile app revival of Nintendogs. While Nintendo didn't confirm, a new patent suggests that one may be in our future. I hope this is real because it is one of the best digital pet games from my childhood. Prepare yourself and make your way to the battlefield. If you're a Fire Emblem fan, then you should get excited for their newly released game, Fire Emblem Engage, which was released January 20th. Play in a new style of combat with awesome weapons, characters, and skills. Pick up a copy ASAP. A highly anticipated game is dropping very soon. What game, you may ask? Hogwarts Legacy. This Harry Potter game allows you to cast spells, fight dark wizards and goblins, and explore the wizarding world in a way that you never have before. It's an open world RPG, which for my girlies and guys means role playing game. Just an FYI for you. Anyways, you can be your own wizard and shape your own story. Potterheads are waiting in anticipation for February 10th when the game will be released. I think video game fans are for sure getting lots of attention. If you're looking for a new, high-quality show, then listen up. If you haven't heard, one of the most amazing games, The Last of Us, has been adapted for television and can be watched on HBO Max. The show follows Joel, Joel played by Pedro Pascal, and Ellie, played by Bella Ramsey, as they endure the United States after the spread of a mass fungal infection. I'm sure viewers will be on the edge of their seats, and lovers of the video game will be impressed of how faithful this adaption is. There have been some other really awesome shows out recently. Netflix released a show called Kaleidoscope, but what's the big deal? Well, viewers of the show can watch it in any order and it will make sense. There are two episodes that are intended to be first and last. It's recommended that people start the series with the episode titled Black and end it with the episode called White. Any real fan of Backstage Pass will know that my favorite TV show is That 70s Show, and I am so excited. Netflix just released the sequel series called That 90s Show that explores the life of Donna and Eric's daughter, Leia, and her summer adventure back at Point Place, Wisconsin. There are cameos of the original cast and the scenes melt my heart. I already finished it, but I'm so excited for season two. Definitely check it out. You know what else you should check out? This week's segment of Backstage Asks. We asked students trivia questions recapping the past month in Hollywood. Take a look. New year, new us. We are back with another segment of Backstage Asks. This time in the new semester, how are we feeling? Pretty <laughs> physically horrible, but I am excited. <laughs> well, anyways, a lot of things happened over break, and we're going to quiz LaSalle students on what happened. Take a look. Okay, what's your name? Alyssa Vogel. Luke. Maisha. My name is Aiden Branch, host of Q&A. Uh, Nikki. Charlie? That was wrong, but... Naya? Frankie Spinozzi, and I've totally never been on this show before. I'm Natalie. What male pop star recently shaved his head? I don't know. Uh, Harry Styles. <laughs> okay, no. Sean Mendes. Mmm. Sean Mendes. That is correct. Nice. Sean... No, 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 no. Sean Mendes. Mendes. Yes. There we go. Oh, Sean Mendes shaved his head? Breaking news, you heard it here first. Oh no! Are you in mourning? He was so handsome, what happened? Oh, Shawn Mendes. Oh, Shawn Mendes. Correct. He used to call her Senorita. Oh, Shawn Mendes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Name three films that came out during winter break. Glass Onion. Correct. Okay, uh, The Last of Us, that just came out. Um, oh man, this is really embarrassing. Uh, you can cut all this out while I think. Wasn't there a new season of Yellowstone that just came out? Glass Onion. Oh, Jenny and Georgia. And that's it, because that's all I watched. <laughs> Megan technically came out over break. Mm -hmm. Avatar, the new one. Avatar? I forget the rest of it. And then the new Puss in Boots. <gasps> yeah! yeah! Avatar Way of the Water. Uh, Puss in Boots too. Oh my god, wow. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, Avatar yes. was a good one. That was great. I didn't watch it but it's a good one. Okay. Um, Jesus. <laughs> what was that, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever? Mm-hmm. Is there a new season of like Bridgerton or something? I know everyone loves that. Um, the Last of Us just came out. Mm -hmm. um, the Avatar movie just came out. And the new Puss in Boots movie just came out. Wakanda Forever, that one came out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and um, there's this new one called House Party. I don't know if it dropped. My friend went to it yesterday, though. One with the, you can watch in any order. Oh, I don't know. I don't want Kaleidoscope. The blue people. 
Oh, Avatar. How many wins did Abbott Elementary have in the 2023 Golden Globes? I've never, no, I don't know. <laughs> At least one. I would say five. Two? Wow, I don't know, but they won a lot. Three? Hmm, I think it was three Golden Globes. Oh my gosh. Three. Yeah, three. Have you seen that show? Yes, Mirada's amazing. Cheryl, she won yeah. one. The other, Quinetta, Quinny, Quinny, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then Tyler, I know he won one. <laughs> Miley Cyrus's new song, Flowers, takes inspiration from what Bruno Mars song? When I was your man, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy, yeah. she's got this, oh my gosh. Uh, when I was your man. <laughs> if I was your man, that one? Yeah, yeah. when I was your man, but yeah, yeah it's you like got the it. Same thing. Would it be the way you are? Or would it be grenade? It's neither of them. <laughs> but it's the, it's the same time frame. Okay. It was, uh, it's like... Um, when I was your man. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. I think it's the, uh, when I was your man. Is that what Yeah, it? that's correct. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Someone studied. I could have bought you <laughs> flowers. Oh, I held your hand. Uh, what's that one? Uh, is he probably the, uh, when I was your man. Oh. He got it. Eventually he got it. Uh, when I was your man. Yes. Oh my gosh. Are you a Bruno Mars fan? Yes, I am. Good. When I was your man. That is correct, Frankie. All on your own. <laughs> I'm going to sing for you. I'm sorry. <sighs> we thought we could get her this time. Oh, it, just a little? Just a little. Okay. <clears throat> just, just a little snippet. I hope he buys you flowers and holds your hand. All right, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> this Marvel Studios Hawkeye actor had an injury involving a snowplow in early January. Who is it? Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner. Yeah. What is his name, though? Starts with a J. That's not helping. <laughs> I know about this, I don't know the name. Should be Jeremy Renner? Would it be Zendaya's husband? No, but they are the cutest couple. Yes. Oh my god, he looks angry all the time. Jim, Jim, Jimmy Rain, Rainer. Jeremy Renner. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, hope he, hope he can uh, recover through that. Wish him the best. We really do wish him the best. It was so fun to see the LaSalle students on campus again after such a long break. And we learned that Miley Cyrus' song Flowers is an incredible song and that people are really showing their support for Cyrus. She's also really great for live performances and as a New Year's Eve host. But who's the best New Year's Eve host? I think the best way to decide is to bring up the picks. Okay, so we have, a, we have like two different duos here. Okay. We have Miley and Dolly and then Miley and Pete Davidson, Hannah. I mean, there's no, it's Miley and Dolly. I mean, they, they gave They're, like a really, some really good like performances. Well, they both have really good performances. And then also Miley Cyrus is her goddaughter. So it's just so like, yeah. cute. Okay. It's like really cute. Like who the heck cares about Pete Davis? They had like um, one funny skit. Sorry. Like, sorry, Pete. Yeah. Miley and Dolly all the way. Okay, we have Liza Koshy and Ryan Seacrest. So the reason I chose this picture was because they hosted together and I thought they did well. And my thought is that Liza Koshy would be a good replacement for him. She would because, well, he's so iconic that I don't think anyone could replace him. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm definitely gonna choose him for this choice, yeah. but I think she's a really good replacement yeah. for okay. Ryan Seacrest down the line. Yeah, I, I agree. Andy Cohen, and I always, I'm already bummed. Anderson Cooper. Anderson Cooper. The duo. They're the so duo. funny together on the New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. What's it called? I New don't Year's know. Eve. Rockin' Ball or something. Ball drop thing. <laughs> They're really, I th I'm going to choose Anderson Cooper because he's just such a dad to me. But it's just so funny. He's funny. And along with everyone at home, I'm voting Andy Cohen because he is hilarious. Okay. Like, Only, yeah. Spirit animal. <laughs> he is a spirit I embody animal. him every day. I mean, yeah, I think I think that you if I would be Anderson. I, he would crack me up if I saw him. Yeah. I Yeah, I think so. Too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, fasten your seatbelts for the best drama of the year, even though we're only in January. My current favorite song, like everyone else, is Flowers by Miley Cyrus, and it has a lot of meaning behind it, especially in the music video. First of all, the song has influence from Bruno Mars' When I Was Your Man, a song that many sources claim was one dedicated to Miley by ex-Liam Hemsworth. 
The most savage thing that Miley did, which I praise her for, was releasing the single on Liam's birthday, January 13th. Okay, let's get into the Easter egg she put in the music video. The video was supposedly shot at the same house in LA where Liam cheated on Miley with many, many women, 14 to be exact. In the video, Miley dances around very similarly to how Joaquin Phoenix dances in the movie The Joker. Why is this relevant? Re relevant? <laughs> Apparently, The Joker is Liam's fave movie. Miley is also wearing a suit identical to what Liam wore to the Avengers premiere years ago, where he told her to, quote, behave on the red carpet. The last piece of drama that I will leave you with is how Miley Cyrus wore a gold dress, very, very similar to a dress Jennifer Lawrence, who co-starred with Liam Hemsworth, wore at the Hunger Games movie premiere. There are rumors going around that J-Law may have been one of the women Liam cheated with. The drama is here to stay, so make sure you keep checking up on the latest. So a week ago, there was a three-way battle between Miley, Taylor Swift, and SZA, but the beef seemed to be mostly between SZA and Taylor. Both of their albums were battling for the number one spot on the Billboard charts, and fans of both artists were creating memes and throwing endless shade about one another's artists. And it wasn't until both Taylor and SZA squashed the rumor beef with some tweets. This made me think if they ever collab, that'll be the strangest song. If you're not a fan of modern music, then get ready to Vogue, because Madonna is going back on tour. It'll be known as the Celebration Tour and is selling out so much that fans are already requesting more tour dates. This will be her 12th concert tour, and I suggest picking up your tickets immediately. Selena Gomez has a new boyfriend? Nick Jonas, Justin Bieber, The Weeknd, they're in the past. Selena is now rumored to be dating the chain smokers Drew Taggart. Even though Gomez posted a photo on Instagram a few days back saying, I like being alone too much, hashtag single, the two were spotted holding hands in New York. Gomez is denying the hard facts that we are seeing. So what is it? Is it official? I guess it's my job to talk about the other and savory part of this. People would probably be happier if these two, Selena and Drew, got together if Drew Taggart hadn't admitted in a podcast that their group, the Chainsmokers, had multiple three-ways with their fans. Ew. I think people are rightfully disturbed by this uh, fact. No judgment to them. I just don't think you should share that like on a podcast. I have nothing more to say about that. Anyways, the Songwriters Hall of Fame has announced that Gloria Estefan will be inducted, making her the first Hispanic woman to receive this honor. This is a monumental moment and will, and will hopefully inspire new voices and writers. She's an incredible artist and songwriter who's made history with her gift. Aubrey Plaza, America's Sweetheart, hosted N SNL last week. Plaza was a former intern with the set design team of SNL back in 2004. She gave a funny tour of the studio and a recap of her time there as an intern. She also had some really funny skits, including an iconic recreation of the French Miss Universe moment that has the internet dying of laughter. She was also joined by musical guest Sam Smith, and there were just some great moments from that episode, so be sure to watch it. I do have some heartbreaking news for Panic at the Disco fans. They are breaking up. Yep, after 19 years, the band is calling it quits. Lead singer Brendan Murray says he wants to spend more time with his family as his wife Sarah is expecting a baby very soon. Don't panic though, I'm sure they'll be back someday. In more heartwarming news, because we honestly need that right now, Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez surprised customers in a Dunkin' Donuts drive through handing out coffee in Medford, Massachusetts on January 10th. Affleck wore the entire Dunkin' uniform and has been known to be a big-time lover of their coffee, both iced and hot, as he's seen in many paparazzi pictures holding some Dunkin' coffee. He's such a meme. You know who else is a meme? Carol Baskin, the tiger lady from the Tiger King documentary. She found herself back in the public eye because of the rumors concerning her supposedly deceased husband, Don Lewis. A Florida sheriff claimed that Baskin's husband was alive and well in Costa Rica, but now the claim is false, with Don Lewis's family assuring everyone that their family member is deceased. The whole situation is so chaotic. If that's not enough marital turmoil for you, how about this one? Did you hear about Shakira's recent divorce from Gerard Piquet? Over strawberry jam? The Latin pop artist had a sneaking suspicion that her husband may be cheating on her, and when she returned home one day, she found some strawberry jam was missing. Thing is, Gerard does not like strawberry jam, so I guess his hips do lie. His mistress had to be the culprit. People are now calling Shakira forensic, forensics queen. 
Shakira has not held back from throwing some shade, and the internet is certainly enjoying the piping hot tea. Fashion fans were excited to hear the 2023 Met Gala theme and co-chairs when they were announced last week. The theme will be Carl Lagerfeld, A Line of Beauty, which is a tribute to the late designer who passed away in 2019. Co-chairs of this year's gala include Dua Lipa and Michaela Coel. Netflix is releasing a type of all-stars dating show, pulling reality TV all-stars from various dating shows on the app, including stars from The Circle, Too Hot to Handle, and Love is Blind. These stars will compete for love in the show Perfect Match. It will be released starting on February 14th, Valentine's Day. A docu-series on Netflix gives gives us a look into the lives and perspectives of ex-royals Harry and Meghan. The series has a lot of interesting anecdotes from the couple and those close to them. If you don't know, there has been a lot of controversy surrounding these two and the royal family. If you want to hear more about their story, be sure to watch it on Netflix. Speaking of the royal family, Prince Harry's memoir, Spare, is currently being laughed at on social media, specifically because of a chapter where the prince talked about his private parts and other times in his life that probably didn't need to be shared in his life story. The writing can be awkward, and hearing the audiobook read by the prince can make the experience all the more awkward and cringy. So we've covered music, TV shows, video games. Now let's talk about some new movies. Let's, talk with, let's start with Knock at the Cabin, M. Night Shyamalan's latest mystery horror film. A group is on the hunt for a couple staying in a cabin and resort to tying them up so they can get them to, well, do something. I don't know what, and you'll just have to see the movie to find out. The cast looks like an interesting group, and I think this is the perfect film for anyone in the need of a scare. Disney is getting another heroine. In an upcoming film, Disney introduces Asha, a 17-year-old girl from the Kingdom of Rosas who has a talent for seeing darkness in the kingdom. She journeys to bring a real star back home. The movie is called Wish and will be out in November. Let's look into the future. For the new Joker film, Joker Folly Adieu, which is set for release October 4th, 2024. It's the Joaquin Phoenix super serious Joker sequel, so expect some dark stuff but also get excited for Lady Gaga playing Harley Quinn. I think that's truly the, the attention grabber. Hope you don't mind unsettling and disturbing laughter. Age is just a number, right? In this upcoming movie, these 80-year-olds have never been younger. In the movie 80 for Brady, a group of old lady friends embark on a trip to see their hero, Tom Brady, play in the 2017 Super Bowl. The movie looks really funny and will be out on February 3rd. Get your chimichangas, people. Oh, I just cringed. Marvel Studios' Deadpool 3 is coming November 8th, 2024. Get ready for tons of snarky remarks and explosions in the superhero film. Is Deadpool a superhero? Whatever, he's funny, so go see the film. Disney Pixar movies never fail to bring me joy, or tears. They just hit home sometimes. But their newest movie is about two completely opposite characters who find out they have more in common than they think. The movie is called Elemental and shows a city where earth, fire, water, and wind residents live together. It looks cute and will be in theaters this June. So if you were a Nickelodeon kid, then you likely enjoyed or, or heard of the kids show Zoe 101, which starred Britney Spears' sister, Jamie Lynn Spears. It was a show that I loved as a kid, and now there's supposedly a movie in the works known as Zoe 102, which will feature a lot of the original cast, and it will be available on Paramount+. Plus. Why not return to PCA? I was obsessed with Zoe 101 growing up, but I think it's time to talk about my more current obsessions. I'm kicking off our new obsessions with a very popular song on the internet now and back in the day. You're So Vain by Carly Simon, released in 1972, is blowing up the internet. The song got a lot of attention after Kate Hudson lip sang the song in the movie How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, where she changed the lyrics from They'd Be Your Partner to they'd be Ben's partner, in reference to the character Ben, played by Matthew McConaughey. The song is catchy and has been covered by various artists on their tours, including Olivia Rodrigo, Sabrina Carpenter, and even the Foo Fighters. 10 out of 10. Go listen to it right now. My other obsession is a Philly-based show called Abbott Elementary. I just started watching it with my roommate, shout out to Jess, and we love it. It gives the office and Parks and Rec vibes, but is 10 times better because of all of the Philly things they include in the writing, characters, and even plot lines. My favorite episode so far has been when the character Melissa, a South Philly native, teaches other characters how to cook like a real Italian American. 
Let's see what my fave South Philly native is obsessing over this week. I loved that. That's me. For my new obsession, I have to give it to SZA's new album, SOS. How about an album review while we're at it? This is arguably one of my favorite set of songs. My three favorites are Kill Bill, Nobody Gets Me, and Seek and Destroy. There is just something about this girl's voice and her dedication to produce exceedingly excellent music. I'm giving SZA a 10 out of 10 for SOS. I mean, even one of my classes this semester has been playing her album before class, and it's helped my class have this shared bond. My other obsession this week has to be her. You know, as in the artist, her, H-E-R. I've been rewatching her, her live tribute performance for Elton John, where she sang Benny and the Jets. She not only played the piano, but rocked out on the guitar as well. She is amazing and honored Elton John in a tremendous way. I should also mention that I've been listening to her covers from the Beauty and the Beast 30th, 30th year celebration, where she and Josh Groban gave some terrific harmonies. Their voices just complement each other so well. And I think their final duet is truly enchanting. I highly recommend giving both of these a listen, but also checking out some of her's music. She so was really good. She was really, really good. <laughs> I have made Hannah sing like the Beauty and the Beast like final song a million times. We did it just before we, the show. Right before the show. <laughs> um, it was really good. And Josh Groban's voice, I love him. He's underrated. I, I think so too. I, I could listen to him like forever. Forever. I forever. didn't realize he could like sing like that. Like I know they would make jokes about him on Glee and like how underrated and stuff he was. <laughs> on Glee. But like I didn't know. He's got pipes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I usually just listen to him during like Christmas time because his albums for Christmas are just so good. Well, now I have to check that out. Yeah. You definitely do. But he, what are some of his other songs? You Raise Me Up. That's one. He sings that? You didn't know I that? didn't know he sang. Oh I my love gosh. that song. No, that's a really good one too. But yeah, I feel like there's been a lot of good music out recently. There's a lot of good music and like... I don't know if you listen to Sizz's album. If that's yeah, what you're I, gonna, some of them. Some of them. It's really, really good. You should definitely check it out. But I wanted to also talk about Abbott Elementary. I have not watched it. I, I'm a Philly native, but what, from what you've told yeah, me, why it's, haven't you seen it? I don't know why. You should. You should it's, come over and we can watch it. We should def, We definitely should because it seems I've seen like some stills and stuff, and it looks super well, accurate I to a think, public school. <laughs> I didn't go to school here, but I think it's really, I think it's just fun because it has so many like Easter eggs that are like Philly themed that mm -hmm. you wouldn't really get unless you're here. I, I, all right. I definitely have to check it out <laughs> yeah. then. I can't believe it's the end of our show. I wonder what our viewers thought about our stories, thoughts, and opinions about all the content we covered. I wish there was a place they could connect with us. Luckily you can through social media. Get your phone out and follow us on these various platforms seen on your screen. Drop us a follow, leave a comment, and let us know if you have any suggestions. New year, new you, new me, but the same backstage pass. I'm Hannah Balkowski. And I'm Eric Valenti. We'll see you next time on Backstage Pass.